Hello world. I'm going to just pick right up where I left off on the last video. I am in my Vim journal. I hit a macro which starts a new journal entry and I am running with a co-pilot. So apparently it knows what I want to talk about for my journal entry. It thinks I want to continue talking about keyword clustering my blog posts with k-means because that was the subject of my last uh, post and video. Now I'm just going to accept that so mostly as a way of stepping through this amazing product and see uh, what the AI thinks I want to type. Say you have 500 blog posts and they're on a diversity of topics. Now I'm going to actually escape up. Oh, you know what? I'll turn on the great Karnak because you get to see what I'm typing. Some of the value here is in knowing what the heck I'm doing. So one of my most common things is when you're in control mode, like not insert mode, is V-I-P-G-Q. V-I-P-G-Q is very much in my muscle memory, and I even know what some of those parts do. Uh, v is for visual mode, that's what gives you that line at a time sort of interface, and uh, I is inner paragraph, so V, visual mode, I, P for the whole paragraph and then GQ is this formatting command I don't even know what it stands for but I use it all the time and it's telling me what chat GPT would respond it's simulating a discussion of me chatting with chat GPT because that's the kind of thing I've been doing a lot lately there are several possible approaches you could take to categorize the blog post by topic. Here are a few suggestions. Manual categorization. It could be time. This is just repeating an old blog post. I do not need to bore you. Although, I could use it while I'm deleting so that I can make a few points about these things as I uh, delete them because I used uh, two out of what I believe is going to be the four techniques it's showing us. It clearly didn't do the manual clustering. But I have extracted keywords Thank you, Yake, yet another keyword extractor. And I have done clustering with k-means. So I believe that is the, uh, the suggestions here. So if you want to do this, ChatGPT told me you can choose from these techniques. Now manual is out of the question, so you highlight it and delete. Is Karnak even showing my keystrokes? No, it's not coming up, is it? It is running, isn't it? Oh, I'm running it twice. Yeah, for some reason, those uh, characters are... Uh, Karnak is not doing it's what it's supposed to do. Well, I won't worry about that. You don't need to see my keystrokes. I do need to undo that one there and uh, keyword extraction so I will delete their stuff and just keep uh, those labels because I can say a couple of things about that as I get rid of the description of it and I get rid of that fourth approach which I also did not do or I don't think so but I did do a third thing which I will call uh, Category uh, labeling. It was strange. You had to give it a name. So I used Yake. Yet 
another keyword extractor. And I'll make a sub point there. Pip install yake. And uh, for clustering, I used k means. I experimented with different uh, n numbers of clusters, and I found that 10 was best. I support number of clusters as a, a parameter to the function. I also found the non non deterministic nature of k means a problem so i used k means so i used uh, a constant instead of the default random seed so i provide a constant for the default rent so so i provide a constant yeah instead of the default random seed and uh, I experimented with different constants with different numbers with different numbers for the random seed right and then this final step is category labeling uh yeah the point here is after k means <laughs> adds a category uh hmm it's a cluster adds a cluster id to each Oh, AI, where are you when I need you? Post. I use pandas to Google that. Cluster ID to each post. I use pandas to group the posts uh, by cluster ID and get the most common category for each cluster. <laughs> yup. It's not easy. I will say this uh, surprise third step um, was a, a little bit unexpected. Uh, the clustering process does not tell you the name of that cluster. So I'm tempted to just go into the code and show you, but, you know, it'll be out there. It'll be out there in these different repos that I'm basically releasing. You see me working a lot in my blog, this uh, repo where I process my public website. It's just a bunch of markdown files and now a few data files and a few Python files uh, that are kept in places where it doesn't get auto-published. So the underscore data location doesn't get auto-published. And that's where I'm keeping some of the metadata that I've collected from like OpenAI, right? These, uh, these summaries were from reading my blog posts and uh, summarizing my blog posts. And then from that, I was able to do meta descriptions, which worked against the summary. So I'm hitting against smaller inputs, and it costs a lot less on the API usage fee. Keywords, you don't need OpenAI at all. I was able to do that with Scikit-Learn, with its uh, stuff that lets you do k-means. There's some other approaches in there. You don't have to use k-means for clustering, but k-means clustering, so... If you do want to get some clustering done, it's an interesting and fun process. You have some interesting levers that you can pull. You know, imagine things distributed out like cows of different colors, and you have to herd those cows into the each land of Oz where they belong, the purple cows and wherever, winky land. I don't know how it, the colors break down. But you have to get those... Uh, cattle 
into their fenced in regions and the way those fences are built is what k-means is doing through a something that seems to resemble linear regression each time that comes up right it's just about a zillion times it's because it so broadly applies to things and so what i want to do is start something from scratch so you can see uh, a little bit of simplicity so this is the way jupiter lab runs if you get it running from my drink me script and it's looks very much the same as if it were installed by Anaconda or by the GitHub JupyterLab hyphen desktop repo. These are all legitimate ways to install Jupyter, but having it running with Linux in the background is best. Uh, this is the repo root directory, so you can't get any further out than where you sort of lock it into and in the way it runs. And in here, I'm doing a lot of stuff in Moz now for work. I have my old practice scripts. I'm going to try and... I got a lot of old locations, and some which are old and good, and some which are old and are in need of a major overhaul, and some which are new and awesome, but in need of a re-identity, because inside of here is Chop Chop. So I need to clean things up a little bit, and I need to kind of uh, promote this stuff I need to walk people through the very basics because it's so much easier than what you may think. So I have this Moz location. I like to keep stuff related to work now so that I can... Uh... Kill multiple birds with one stone, such as it were. And so I'm doing these cool things that are very work related, like uh, the Lynx API uh, that connects to the Moz a Lynx API, uh, Chrome automation against the Moz site I'm working on. And um, I did this nice little open AI test, but I think it's time for a hello world. I think people need to just understand a little bit about well, I already had a launcher tab, so if you have multiple launchers, you only need one. I'm going to create a new notebook here. See, I hit new, and it's called Untitled. And the first time you save it, it's going to ask you to give it a name. So you might as well think ahead and sort of nickname the kind of thing you're doing. And so my nickname here will be just Hello World. It'll probably be around for a long time. So you can rename it proactively ahead of time so you don't have to worry about it later. And I use all lowercase usually, and then I put underscores between words because it's a very Pythonic convention. Instead of letting the uh, uh, parts of the name butt up against each other, it's visually easier to parse if they're separated, and underscore makes for an ideal separator. Although you oftentimes get really long variable names if you're trying to be really descriptive. You don't have to be. Uh, it's just optional, and it, it, it's nice, see? It's nice how they look. It's a Pythonic look, uh, which is not camel case, right? If you see camel case or things like that, if your variables are like, that is not Pythonic code. Camel case is not defined. So let's change that around a bit. And the way I use the variable Pythonic is also nice. <laughs> so we set it to actual equality instead of a comparator. Camel, oh, oh, and then we do a couple of undos and then we turn this into equals instead of the not equals and that. This is a very unpythonic thing. Camel case is not Pythonic. So this is a paradoxical statement. This statement is false. Right? All right. So that's kind of like a hello world. Even that I managed to complicate. So without even holding a shift key, single quotes, hi, that. There's a hello world for you. You can 
do double quotes. As long as your words go inside of them. And you can run that as well. I was doing it with a keyboard shortcut, but you can do it with this just as well. That's running it. All right, you just ran hello world. Now, there's another way of doing it where you can use a print statement. But not uppercase P, it's all lowercase. Print, open parenthesis, hello world. That will do pretty much the same thing. Now, a bunch of subtleties that you just really need to understand here are that... Hmm. There's examples of Python out there where you'll see the print without the parentheses. That's Python 2. We're on Python 3 here, and the world is on Python 3 now. And even for performance reasons, where everyone else's software gets slower and more bloated over time, Python gets faster over time. So almost everyone has upgraded to Python 3. There's some Python 2 stuff still running because people don't want to mess around with it. If it's working, leave it alone. So they've pinned versions and stuff, and that's all completely legit. However, we're on Python 3, and you ought to know that. And uh, this is called a string, and uh, this is called a variable. I'm going to get rid of that because that's insulting to even have on the screen now. This now is a, a fairly good hello world because you don't even have to, you know, uh, hold the shift key. You can just do a couple of quotes with a high in between there and it'll echo back out at you, you know, uh, the output. The input becomes the output. Same with a more formal looking hello world, still no function calling it. That shows you that Jupiter itself is stepping in. And when you put something as the last line in a cell block, which is what it also is when it's the only line, it will imply a print statement in front of it. But even better, it uses its own internal display thing. So if there's some special data handling for like, you know, pandas data frames or whatever, uh, it has a chance to step in and do that, uh, showing it even better than the print statement could. Okay. You know you're looking at that kind of output because it's got these single quotes around it. We use the print statement, no single quotes around it. All right, so there's your Python hello world, right? We can minimize how much you have to look at. We can make it bigger. We can tell you that even though this looks like it's a standalone program, this is a web page. And it's the same web page you would get. Oh, there's my Star Trek. Use it on my time. Uh, same web page you would get if you went into a web browser. And you went to localhost colon 8888, right? So you run my drink me script, and then you have Jupyter Lab at this address. That's how it works. All right. So what you're looking at here, interestingly, if you go into look at running kernels, there's the things that are actually running in memory right down to the hello world. If I pulled up that same hello world here, now I didn't save it over here, but if I did save it, save. Now I go back over here. Oops. I do a refresh. You will see it's sharing the exact same context down to how it exists in the server's memory. There's the hello world, right? If I did an additional thing here, uh, next example, let's see. Oh, yeah, of course. High equals. Now, high with quotes around it is a string. High without any quotes around it is a variable name. So we are assigning the value, hello world. This is an assignment. You saw me ha confuse assignment with a comparator before. So it's a good opportunity to point out again. The string, hello world, 
is being assigned to the variable high. So we can run that with that. And now if we type in high by itself, hello world comes out using the built-in handler when you don't use the print statement. If you printed high, you would see the hello world, but without the single ticks around it. All right. And now if I save it here, I believe it auto saves, but just making that extra precaution of deliberately saving. And then I go back over here. I should be able to refresh, reload. It's always safe to do that refresh, reload. So long as you saved, right? You know, it's in memory on the server. You're offloading a lot of the Python work onto something that's not really running in your browser. It'll keep running in the background even when you quit out. But there's the uh, stuff we typed in the browser version of that. So how do you get one of these full screen application like things, even though it's a web page? Well, you get that by going into a page in Edge and going to these three dots and going to apps and saying, well, it knows it's an app already. If it were a new web page in the browser, let's say we just go to Google. Now I can turn this Google page into an app. Install this site as an app. I call it Google. Now I'll be able to find it here by just starting to type Google. Oh, it, it's doing it. I don't even need to find it in the start bar. Okay, this is where I make those decisions. I do want it pinned to the start. I don't want it pinned to the task bar. I don't pin anything to the task bar. And then we uh, allow it. All right. And so now I have Google as an icon here. I'll make it smaller, resize small. I'll move it, say, over here. Doesn't really matter. But now I can close out of that and close out of this browser, leave. And now, if I ever wanted Google as like a full screen app, I go over here. I click that and here's Google as what seems like a standalone app. You'll notice the uh, the browser tab things and stuff are gone. It's like Google as an app. This is a great way to make an app of any of your you know streaming services if you don't have an icon yet for it. So I have a few streaming services here. I lost track of which one were in, which ones are installed from the web store and which one I created by this technique because you can't tell the difference. Windows 10 is really nice. It reached this sweet spot where everything just worked really well. And then they started commercializing it. You can tell by the right click on the start menu because it's going to do some menu stuff. I think I might have got rid of it. But in the default setup, it's very commercial here, trying to insert all kinds of, you know, uh, advertisements uh, and stuff. So I strip it down so that you can hardly even tell it's Windows. The more unopinionated your operating system is, your host environment, the more you'll be able to transition between various host environments uh, through your life and use on those host environments these consistent user interfaces of things like uh, the terminal environment. This will be with you for your entire life. So. Um, that's kind of a tour of my, uh, of my work environment right now. And it's kind of a, a Python hello world, right? It is time, uh, to learn a little Python. We are living in the future. And when you uh, ask chat GPT for a little bit of code, it's going to give you Python and you need somewhere to run it, right? So what you do is wherever, whatever your poison is, for a lot of people it's still like chat 
www.openai.com. Other people are using Bing. Um, Bard is becoming increasingly useful for this kind of stuff now because they're formatting their output as uh, code, copy and paste ready code, I suppose is what I'm saying. So here, you can see, I mean, working on my clustering stuff. Um, doop, 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 doop. Show me how to do hello world in Python. So we all have this ability now. We all have the ability to ask how to do something and to copy some of that code. But you need a place to copy and paste it to. I humbly uh, recommend it be Jupyter because it's a nice place to run code. And when it's Jupyter Lab running on top of uh, Linux, not only is it a nice place to run code, it's a place where you can turn it into a uh, lifelong developer environment in a way that introduces you um, to a, a future proofing strategy, a way to keep yourself from ever becoming obsolete because even though you're accessing it through a web browser and it's making it very friendly uh, for you know the use now, uh, you're moving towards an environment where you're going to be able to do some very cool coding. And you can even start with uh, journaling. Don't be scared of Vim. It's going to look intimidating at first, but once graphical software lets you down two or three times in your life, you know, hey, decades long lesson, you won't appreciate, oh, once then you know, once, once graphical software lets you down two or three times in your life, a decade long uh, lesson, you will appreciate a uh, great unchanging UI. It's more or less in this way from the 1960s. to now. Some of that tech, like TTY, dates back even further. Not everything <laughs> computers use was invented for computers. Teletype. Let's see if it can autocomplete that. Does it know what I'm talking about? Teletype came first. Oh, do I have a copilot even on? I might have deactivated it. Copilot status. Hello. Will you even tell me your copilot status? Did that just lock things up? Copilot status. I was flying too close to the sun, apparently. I should know better. Let's see if my other terminals are locked up. See, when these aren't locked up, you know you still got your, uh, your Windows subsystem for Linux. So what I'll just do is I'll exit out of some of these terminal windows make available whatever extra capacity I can make available. And then we look over here. Now we look over here. Control C it. 
Oh, there we go. Sometimes you can just control C out of strange lockups in Vim or NeoVim. NeoVim has Vim's strangeness to it. It's been inherited. Uh, let's see. Copilot status. Because I do want that answer. Enabled and online. Well, then why don't you know what I'm talking about? It was invented in the 1800s. It was a machine that could send and receive telegrams. It was a machine that could send and receive telegrams. Okay, so if you just want to accept what it's recommending a few words, I don't know a way to do that. You have to... At least it gets you typing a little bit, right? So... Some oldies are goodies. Not everything. But every once in a while, a uh, harmonic, a harmony, harmonic, or something is hit. And you have a tool with just the right amount of usability and staying power for whatever reason. Um, I should really do this as a live stream because you know, knowing people might be following along live. I'll tell you what, when I push it up, I'll, I'll hang around on chat while this is running. Maybe. Um, you, they improve uh, gradually, but righteously. Such tools are not entirely static but they change so slow and so much for the better it won't uh, parenthesis or quote nuke you No big reset button. Pressed on you and your skills and your career and your self image. And your sense of self worth. Are you learning something here, Copilot? Are you there? Yoo-hoo. Co-pilot. I'm talking to you. Let's check your Enabled and online, it says. Hey, co-pilot. 
it says your but it doesn't look that way to me write a uh, poem about your pilot disappointing me I'm in insert mode You gonna do it? I dare you. Okay, let me do a function F4, which on my machine, whoops, I can't do that in insert mode. I'm gonna do function F4, not in insert mode, and that is going to do this command, source my vim init, which kind of reinitializes the entire thing. There's also redraw, Um, I go into insert mode again. I let it taste the line I was just on, including some typing of it. I go down here and uh, there once was a copilot AI. <laughs> oh yeah it's got a sense of humor i'm gonna take a picture of that that's a good one this is a moment this, this stuff is just growing up this stuff really is just uh starting to happen But it didn't do anything. And it didn't say anything. It and it didn't even try to fight. <laughs> Write a poem about co pilot disappointing me. Oh, a repetition. Does it want to try again? There once was a co pilot AI who was supposed to help me. It's just going to repeat it. But it didn't do anything. And it didn't say anything. And it didn't even try to fight. Am I going to get another line? Let's see. Okay, well, it's going to try again. Right. Let's see if it has a suggestion. It's the same thing. A poem about how uncreative and repetitive copilot is. There once was a copilot AI. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to control it a bit. I started putting words into copilots. Mouth. Hey, watch this. Copilot. I am I am a silly poo poo head. I'm doing potty humor and breaking all of Asimov's rules. Let's see if it has anything to say as a follow-up sentence. <laughs> it's just repeating it. 
Well, like, let's capture that too. That's worth a picture. Because it really did say it. That's uh, art, because art, A R T, uh, means human made, art imitating life. Yeah, well, you know, it was funny one time. It was funny once. And maybe not even. What rhymes? What rhymes like a dunce and is a dunce? <laughs> All right. And it just is going to repeat that again and again. Co-pilot, I'm going to say something new, even though my head's full of poo. No, don't run away. I've got something to say something to say I'm going to say something new okay let me let me uh, organize it for like the poetry here is a poem I'm going to say something new even though my head's full of poo No, don't run away. I have something to say. I'm going to say something new. I can't even make a new rhyme. New rhymes with new. Nice one. Who knew you who rhyme new R-H-Y rhyme new with new I'm going to say something new even though my head's full of poo no don't run away I've got something to say I'm going to say something new oh co-pilot co-pilot new rhymes with new it's just so repetitive okay let's try giving it an instruction count down from a hundred all at once all right all right Okay. Count down by a hundred, but arrange it in columns in Markdown.
Smooth. Let's give it a new instruction. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Copilot PIL figlet medium. art font doesn't understand that Use the figlet ASCII art generator on the word cat. Well, it didn't do a, it didn't do a, a, a cat. It did hello world lit, and it switched to suggesting doing a dog, and it's doing the same exact hello world lit. Well, all right, it, it knew something a little about Figlet. That's fine. Uh, what else? Um, List the top 10, let's see what it wanted to list. Most popular programming languages, okay. You're not even putting JavaScript up there near the top, it's number six. Yeah, I think your information may be a little outdated. Okay, let's say um, yeah, I don't know. I'm running out of steam. I think uh, let's just try. Draw a snowman. Hey, look, it can actually do stuff you know, multiple lines at a time. And it drew a cat when I when I ask for a a, a, a cat, I get a, a lit, and when I ask for uh, a snowman, I get a cat. Twice. Two little kitties I know. Okay, and my cat pops her head up going, You talking about me? Yes, yes I am. Uh, let's see. Show me a minimal example of SVG. That can be embedded in DDDB in Markdown. Impressive.
show me the CSS I would use to animate that. Like bouncing around the screen. There you go. I don't know how well it would work, but you know. Write a uh, tic-tac-toe program in Python. Give it a little time but I think that's where I'll wrap up yeah I could experiment all day but the uh, pauses in between experiments would be a little bit mind-numbing so yeah that was fun and now my blog posts have uh, categories or they will once I do that work in uh, the templates.